my name is Ivan Shu. Um, summer intern actually. This is the outline, so you guys know what's coming. Um, we have the HG2 ASAT, which is the first structure I'll explain in a bit. Um, motivation, goal, method to get the, I also get that acronym later, method, frequency. HG ASAT actually stands for mercury, mer mercury acetate, and it's a crystal structure, and I'm pretty sure most of you know what a crystal structure is, what, you know, really builds a lot of stuff that you guys know. Um, so there are two very important bonds that occur with this specific um, structure. It's the covalent OC, which is the oxygen and the carbon, which is this bond right here. I don't think you can see it, but that's an oxygen, that's a carbon. And that's the covalent bond that occurs, that occurs in this crystal structure. Now, there's also a secondary bond, which is um, with, between the oxygen and the mercury, HG, which is oxygen and mercury, here. And this, in the secondary bond that occurs here, the oxygen and the mercury, there is a daughter acceptor interaction, PA interaction, which is from the oxygen and the mercury occurs here, and there's an electron pair like transition, as you guys know, happens in the ion bond. Um, the work I did in uh, Florida, I'll explain it more you know, in depth, that way you guys are confused. I work with um, computers, more or less, where I kind of optimize structures. Now, the purpose for that research itself, in general, is just to prove experimental data, and that's really important because data, usually you want to prove it experimentally and theoretically, that way it can be more valid and can be used for further research. So my job was to prove it theor uh, theoretically. So the experimental data, I had to confirm the experimental data, theoretically, like I just explained, um, I had to explain the, um, the trends it has and determine the OH distance effects on the structure. And I'll explain that in a bit. I'll show you a graph, that way it won't be confusing. And um, the secondary bonding is helpful. In other words, the reason why I'm doing this whole thing itself is just to help you know predict crystal packing, which is the bonding of crystals itself. And also, this could help, help intermolecular interactions in the body. Of course, that's important because that can you know figure out what kind of you know structure to bond more easily in the human body. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, this is experimental data. So you have to, what I have to do is I have to find the interaction energies and varying distances between the mercury and oxygen or secondary bonding. In English, that means I would have to find how the distance between this oxygen and this mercury affects the structure itself. Now. As you see in the graph here, I know that they're really tiny, but this, this I think says 2.7 and this says 3.3. These are distances between this and that, the mercury and the oxygen. Now, what this graph says clearly is that as the distance increases, the frequency or the vibrational frequency, which I'll explain later, decreases, as you can see exponentially. And I have to explain that using theoretical means. Density functional theory is a quantum mechanical method used in physics chemistry to investigate the electronic structure of many electron systems. Okay. What that means is that it, it's a way that, you know, they take, for example, physics laws and chemistry laws, you know, as you guys know, there are, you know, like, let's see, an example um, would be, you know, like the gas laws, for example, things like that. It would take those laws and when you put the structure in the computer, it would, it would um, consider those laws and move the structures based on what the computer would think would happen in real life. What the calculation does is that it finds the energy of the structure, and then that would equal to its density, which would hence give you the, well, yeah, would give you the potential energy, which is the state of the electron. State of the electron meaning that it will give you a, the exact location of the electron in a structure, which is really important because, like, as you guys know, that. You know, like for example, the you know uncertainty principle, where you never know where an electron really, really is compared to another one, and like it's really hard to determine. It's really a lot of probability and things of that sort, but it predicts that. Form. This is the main equation that the computer uses to determine everything, and I'm not going to explain each variable. You guys can see it here. Um, so DFT was used with effective core pseudo potential and Gaussian basis set. Gaussian basis set. Um, Okay, the program I used was called Gaussian. In, in bonding, uh, when, two, when two atoms bond, they, in a way, they vibrate. You guys all know that atoms are constantly moving. And the thing is, when, like, if you can figure out how they're moving, how fast, how slow, you can determine a lot from the bond itself. The application is infrared intensity. What I mean by that is that it, it like, sends light to that bond that's happening, to that little fluctuation, and it would 
construct this graph with that and you know with that light, the infrared that is going through it and it's absorbing to determine this graph. So this is the graph that I was able to construct with the data with the data I you know retrieved. As you can see in this graph and that graph, this graph is more linear. You can draw a straight line and almost touch all the dots. But for this one, if you were to draw a straight line, it would only touch maybe two dots. And the thing is, you can see that the trend is similar where as the distance increases, there is a, you know, a drop in the frequency. But here it is more exponential rather than linear. As the distance increased, the energy actually decreased. This is negative, but as you guys know, an energy, if this negative doesn't literally mean it's negative, it means that it's just a negative energy, maybe it's releasing or absorbing in a way. Theory is in general, in, the theory is in general in agreement with the experiment. In other words, as I showed you guys, as the experimental data showed that as distance increased, the frequency decreased. And I did get that theoretically, but it was just more linear. Um, as this is increased, the energy of the secondary bond between the mercury and the oxygen decreased. Also, I showed you guys the other graph with the energies, so it's the same thing. Um, as this increases, vibration frequency looks like that. So, so this decrease is much slower, like I was telling you guys, it's not as exponential, more linear, but you see, like I explained earlier, DFT is not, it wasn't sufficiently accurate to describe the secondary um, mercury and oxygen bond. If I were to use MG, Two probably would have been would have been a prettier graph. Thank you guys.